In Unexpected Futurist, we profile the lesser known futurist side of influential individuals. This episode's unexpected time traveler, Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain. When one thinks of Mark Twain, one thinks of folksy wit, Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, and the Mississippi River. Twain's work immortalized the rapidly changing United States of the 1800s. But in his personal life, Twain often preferred the future to nostalgia, supporting women's suffrage and civil rights, frequently being contemptuous of what he considered to be the absurd and corrupt values of the past. He harbored a long-running fascination with technology and new gadgets, and frequently invested in the latter, albeit with spotty success, the best. But Twain cemented his becoming an honorary futurist via his long friendship with inventor and mad scientist archetype Nikola Tesla. Tesla was at the forefront of research into wireless energy transmission, and he gave Twain demonstrations of the radical new technology. In this photo, Tesla has Twain performing a neat trick in which a bulb is lit by harmlessly passing high voltage current through Twain's body. Don't try this at home. His 1889 novel, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, displays Twain's scorn of chivalry, as well as serving as a platform for Twain to share some of his tech knowledge with audiences. But Twain also used the work to give readers a warning on the future. In a climactic scene, 30,000 knights are killed in a pointless charge against Gatling guns, landmines, and electrified fences. The technology the protagonist uses to revolutionize his new home also ends up laying waste to it. A very similar scene would play out in the real world 15 years later, as millions of young men died charging across no man's land in World War I. Like his friend Tesla, Twain was preoccupied with the opportunities suggested by wireless transmission systems. In 1898, he wrote a short science fiction story envisioning a visual audio telephone system called the Telectroscope. Now, the Telectroscope was a real device, or more accurately, a plan for a real device, the product of several individuals. Most notably in our case, Polish inventor Jan Szczepanek, Twain could be considered a mad scientist groupie. In reality, the telectroscope was one of the first stabs at what would eventually become television. But either because his imagination got a hold of him, or possibly because Twain had read incorrect news articles about the device. In Twain's story, the telectroscope was transformed into a two-way interactive television that worked over telegraph and phone lines and could instantly access any interconnected point on the globe. But perhaps more interesting than the device itself is Twain's description of how humans would use it. In the story, a man who had been condemned to death for murdering the real-life Schepanik, and who earlier in the tale had mocked the idea of telectroscopes as useless toys, is locked in a cell with the new device. The following is told from the point of view of the man's guard. Day by day, night by night, he called up one corner of the globe after another, and looked upon its life and studied its strange sights and spoke with its people, and realized that by grace of this marvelous instrument, he was almost as free as the birds of the air. He seldom spoke, and I never interrupted him. Now and then I would hear him say, next give me Hong Kong, next give me Melbourne. After a little he said, I must see the sun again, the sun. And the next moment he was feverishly calling, China, give me China, Peking. I was strangely stirred and said to myself, to think it is a mere human being who does this unimaginable miracle. It turns winter into summer, night into day, storm into calm, gives the freedom of the great globe to a prisoner in his cell. It doesn't sound like it would have been particularly surprising to Twain that many humans of the future would spend their days staring into interconnected glowing screens. And in this story, at least, it sounds like he may have been okay with that. But that isn't to say that the story has a happy ending. Twain's cynical side triumphs this time too. Although in this case, human nature, bureaucracy, and fossilized value systems cause tragedy, despite the heroic efforts of technology to save the day. So what would Twain have thought about the current state of technology? It's hard to say definitively, but even three years before his death, he was still an early adopting gadget geek. In a 1907 entry into what would become his autobiography, he excitedly wrote, There is a new invention, a 
Apparently, it is a wireless telephone. It records the messages which it receives, and it is able to do this when no one is present. Therefore, you can call up a friend, deliver your message into his house, with none to receive it but the machine. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching!